Lise Marvin Art. Welcome to class three of uh, Coaster Extravaganza, where I was showing you start to finish, mm, how to blow out was the first one, how to prep your tile, how to blow it out with the bloom. The second class was all about different swipes. And this third one is uh, how to finish them off. So we will be resining them and I'll show you how I finish off the backs. Then after that, I'll have about seven, I don't know how many of actually doing my um, coast commissions coasters of so many different beautiful color combos. Like I'm looking at them now, you can't see because they're a surprise, but like so gorgeous, no joke. Okay, so you've seen the first two coasters that I've made. We did the dark uh, blue one for the first one, how to blow them out, they are so pretty. Um, and then the second one we did was all the swipes. Um, I'll show you close-ups later. But a lot of you guys are nervous about resin, which I understand. And, you know, it's actually harder, I find, to do coasters because they're smaller and more fussier. Um, but let's talk about what you need. It's a lot of prep work more than the actual um, doing of it. So first things first, you get yourself a table. You lay it out with... Um, silicone mat if you have uh which you can get at fluid art company if not you can get like just i use garbage bags i'm using half and half here okay then you have to figure out immediately what you are using to cover it to dry um some people who do like little things they use like little like picnic uh net things that go on top which is really cute because i do big stuff i cover my table with these big canvases so what i do is i take my big red solo cups i put them around my table and i place these on top so i know as a guide where i'm going because once you finish the resin you want to get these covered as quick as possible so you lay out what you're covering with then you can put underneath in that space whatever you're resining uh, to hold up my stuff, I just use mixing caps. Again, there's like so many different things that you can use as long as it's level. Now, being level isn't as hard for me like when I use my big wood stuff because it's pretty level. Uh, but, you know, when you dry them, you want to make sure. Probably using two is better, but I have so many I didn't want to waste. So I'm just kind of like winging it with one. Okay, number one, put on your gloves before you start touching anything. The number one enemy of resin is oil, especially oil from our hands. So you don't wanna to be touching anything with your oily hands because that is immediately gonna repel your resin. There's a few different reasons why you can get divots or holes in your resin. The number one reason is oil from your hands. We don't use, I don't use silicone, so I'm not worried about that. Could be silicone as well. Okay, the number two reason is you didn't mix the two parts well enough, so they're wavy. Number three, you, oh, there's four reasons. You torched too much to get the bubbles out and burnt the resin, it goes like this. Number four, it pulls away from the sides because you did not put enough resin on. Now, there are resin calculators um, for each brand of resin that, you use i just wing it of course i don't feel like these coasters should take too much probably i'll do like maybe a tablespoon and a half but again don't quote me um i really want to sit you want to know something funny i took mo to a trampoline park yesterday and for some reason i thought i was 12 and i could trampoline there's no other parents trampolining other than me obviously because they're smart so now I, uh, <laughs> I'm sore. Let's go. I actually crushed a child. It was not my fault. Um, oh, hello. So, oh, that's nice. In the middle of my jumping, I'm like, oh, I have like a back injury. I probably shouldn't do this. But anyways. So, we have the cleaning and the reasons why you might have problems. Let's talk about things that you need, okay? You need gloves. I actually usually um, 
put on two or three pairs of gloves only because I use my hand to spread it out, especially big pieces. And then if what I want to torch after, I don't want to get, although I mean, clearly, but still you don't want like, I don't want to get resin in my torch so it's safe, so it sticks, so I remove it. Anyways, so we have safety first with resin. Gloves, respirator, okay? Goggles, I don't have my goggles here. When you get a respirator, 3M is always good. You want to look for vapors because there are two kinds of respirators. There's respirators for like particulates, like dust and stuff. And there's respirators for vapors, okay? That's what we want, it's very important. Even if your resin says no, no smelly things, no, okay? Toxic resin respirator. That was my little thing for you. Okay, what else do you need? Isopropyl alcohol, 99% to kill the oil. You wipe every single piece, okay? You put it on, I've wiped them all already. Wipe, 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 okay? You wanna clean it, okay? okay? Next, you need a torch and some butane to, what, when I'm doing big pieces, because sometimes my torch like runs out, I just leave it on the table and I literally do a fill up. There's a hole underneath. And I just go like this for a minute while I'm resining, you'll feel it get cold. It fills it up. And then it sticks. Okay. Next, you need your resin. Now, for coasters, you want heat resistant, okay? Um, there are a bunch that go up to, I don't know what. Today I'm using eye coat and it goes up to 500. You don't need 500. It's not like people are like boiling their coasters. They're just putting hot coffee. So I, I think over a hundred is fine. Um, you need a mixing cup for your resin. I'm using a big one. You don't need this big, but I'm doing other pieces, so. I'm doing one this big, 40 ounces. Hopefully, I'm sure it'll be enough. Um, now, I usually mix with just like, you know, from Home Depot, like a stir stick that I get. I'm gonna use this today. It's kind of, it's, so, it's covered in resin, whatever. It's like fine, I just don't want to tie my arm out today. So I'm using this. You want anything silicone. Now, um, also you can get, which I wish I had actually, you can get like cute silicone things from Fluor Art Company because I'm just thinking, so normally when I do big pieces, I just like plop, plop, plop. Obviously we don't want to do that. Um, so maybe I'll just go around with that thing and just like, you know, dole it out that way. I'll see. Um, okay. I think I covered it all. So then your table is set up. You have all of your things ready. You have your cups ready. Um, so what you're gonna do, so I'm, while I'm doing this, like I'm gonna mix it up and everything with a mask. Oh, let's talk about how to mix up resin. You want to um, read your directions of your resin, okay? So, of course, Ali, so I'm just gonna make so much noise. Um, so m most resins like tabletop resins and like art resins and stuff, um, are one to one ratio. Now I put in, it's hardener and resin because the resin's like kind of gloopy. Then when you mix it with the hardener, it gets hard. Um, I put the hardener in first because it's thinner and then I pour the resin in, which is gloopier and I find it easier to mix it. Some Again, read your directions. Some directions say mix for three minutes, whatever it is. I mix until I don't see any more streaks in the resin and it looks clear even though I see the bubbles. Let's talk about bubbles. Those are so annoying. Some brands are worse than others. Sometimes it's not your fault. That's what I wanna tell you, okay? If you're finding 
that even though you're looking and you're getting those bubbles out and you're looking and you still get bubbles when it dries, I want to tell you, try a different brand of resin, okay? I've had to try so many different brands um, and so I want to make sure you know it's not always your fault. And the annoying thing is, yes, you, you get a piece of dust and it's so annoying. Like, again, some resins are worse about that than others, um, but covering your work quickly will help. So, oh, another tip is like spray water around your area in the air and it will like kind of get the dust residue out, okay? Little things like that, but at the end of the day, it's really difficult. Um, once, so, oh, resins have different cure times. So, um, some, some in different working times. So some have working times of half an hour, some say 45 minutes. I mean, it shouldn't take you that long to do this batch. Um, any batches, like I do like so, so, so many batches and it takes me like 20 minutes. Cause once you go, you go, you go around, <clears throat> Um, you spread, you torch. I find it easier to turn off the overhead lights and to look at the daylight. Um, and I get on the floor like this and I look and then you can really see the bubbles. So you want to do that. Um, after 24 hours, it's pretty good. Oh, you people say, how long should I wait to resin? That's the biggest question. And people are like, wait a three weeks, wait a month. So these are pretty, these are dry and thin right? <clears throat> I've never had a problem resonating three days later because the paint is so thin, there's no moisture in it to come up. Okay. Um, if you're nervous, wait longer, but I've never had a problem. I mean, these are a couple weeks old anyways, but still, um, right. Oh, so after 24 hours, um, they're dry. I wouldn't fiddle with them really until like three days later. I would wait three full days for it to totally cure and harden. Um, and then that's when you start taking off the back, cleaning it up and doing your thing. So I'll get to the resin part now. And then the next part, we will get to finishing the back. Okay, be right back. Okay, I've done a sped up edited version. So uh, the resin I'm using today is called Eye Coat Resin. Um, I don't remember if I told you, but this goes up to 500 degrees, but I don't think you need that for your coasters. I put in the hardener first, and then I put in the resin because the resin's more gloopy. Um, and I'm gonna mix it. So first of all, I measure like exactly and um mix 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 and i mix see how it's like cloudy um i know the transitions are really weird there's something wrong with my app but just bear see look it just froze for a minute anyways i mix till it's clear i started um layering on the resin with that silicone thing from fluid art company but it was like too small and making me annoyed so eventually i ditched it and I just started pouring from the thing. That's how I usually pour on my big ones anyways. Um, but it was just like very tedious with the small four inches. Once they're on there, then I give a good spread. Again, this time I used my fingers. There are so many like tools that you can use, but I just had a big bulk to do. So I found this much faster. So after I spread it out with my fingers, I take my torch. Oh. Yeah, there I go, I'm torching everything. And then I cover it up. Okay, it is the next day. I have not looked, but something else. I don't wanna show you all of them because those are like secret ones coming up, but I'll go like this maybe. Here we go. Oh yeah. Okay. I got it. I got in a little, oh, that's so I didn't even show you this one. This was from my, um, like a watercolor layering one. And I, I just had enough. Hold on. Ooh, it's really pretty. What I love is, see how like the transparent layering? Okay. Anyways, that's not what you're here for, but I like it. Um, I'll put her back over here. Let's see. Hello, ladies. Well, they sure are 
Barkley. Okay. So we have a nice, even coat. And I'll show you all of them. This probably isn't the best light, but. Okay, that's that one. And then I'll show you one of the um, swipeys. Fun. Swipeys. All right, so now we are gonna go over to the other table and finish them off. And I'll show you how I finish them and wrap them. Be right back. Okay. These are some of the things that I use now. I'm a bit extra, okay? But this is what I use for packing. Now, first things first, I designed my own logo, okay? Um, there's lots of like different apps that you could use if you don't wanna pay, but um, this was actually inspired by an earring that I saw. And uh, so yeah, that's my logo. I got it printed on, oopsie, <laughs> Zazzle apparently. Um, so, and I got it big because I'm normally doing big pieces. Um, and so I stamp it. I think, I mean, it is a bit extra for just like a four inch. These I got on Amazon. Um, I'll put this all on my Amazon list, what I can. So these are four inch cork self-adhesive, okay? To go on the back. Now. Um, I like to be extra careful, so I do put some dots of Gorilla Glue, or you can use any other glue, just to be sure, you know, to keep it safe. So, I also have this five inch pink, obviously, box. So, and I like to do a little mark on it, which we'll do in a second. I have also, actually, I got this years ago, I don't even remember, this is packing tape. Um, it's quite big for this, but whatever. This is like you wet it and you wrap it around the box. This is, so right now for my big boxes, I actually have my own logo boxes. Uh, but when I didn't have that, I used this, just an idea. Probably got it, um, some that other website? I'll think about it in a minute. And then I have some bubble wrap. Oh, and I have some tissue. When you're wrapping your stuff, you don't want the resin to touch the bubble wrap, so you can wrap it in tissue, you can wrap it in glassine paper, whatever, and then wrap it in the bubble wrap. So, let's see. I haven't done this in so long. As I said, Chris does all of this for me because she loves it and I don't love it. So, let's see how it goes. Lisa Marvin, we'll practice on a box because the box doesn't really matter, right? Lisa Marvin, let's stamp a box. Okay, ready? I don't know, I'm nervous, doesn't really matter. But okay, there we go. And cute. Could use a little more ink, but all right. And then let's do these. So this one's a little harder because I don't know where to aim it. Uh, let's see. Eeks, eeks. I'm pressing down. Okay, not horrible. I'm gonna have Chris do them, but like I said, you know what? I do have a smaller one somewhere. This is a bit extra. Um, not horrible, but it doesn't need to be this aggressive, okay? But you get the picture. Okay, so actually because I don't want to touch my coasters yet because they are just 24 hours, like I am gonna leave in a few days, I'll get like another coaster, an old coaster, um, and do that. So, oh, but I do, you know what? I do want to peel one for you. Okay, I'll peel one for you, but I'm not going to mess around with it. This is just like literally a three-year-old coaster. Lord it. So let me get one of these. And what I would do is I put a towel down, okay? So I can work on it. Now, you don't really need to tape the middle because the you can see the... Um, Resin is just around the edges, but it depends. Because this stuff you're not gonna see because it's gonna have this on the back. So let's see how easy it is for me, especially because I'm kind of holding it, but. So if you find, see that's pretty easy. If you find um, it gets stuck, you can use a hair dryer to uh, heat the resin, but 
this is peeling pretty easily. Mm -hmm. This takes a bit of time, but you kind of get the picture, right? So you can kind of like fold it back, rip it off, and then it's basically clean and it will be covered by the um, cork. So I think we're done enough futzing around with this, right? And I'll do the other one. But you get, so she's like, uh-oh, no, it's not, uh-oh, hold on. It's not really uh-oh, it just like really peels off, see, easily. So just like that, it's clean, basically. And you would, you have a nice coaster ready to go. I'm gonna put this back and then we'll work on this coaster. So. I will have a towel down and I'm gonna take this ugly coaster and put this funny, I think I'll, I'll use, I'll probably use my smaller stamp for the other ones, but um, let us remove the sticky tape. Okay. Let us place some glue. One, two, just like a little bit. You don't need to be aggressive with it. Um, and then let us place this way. It's a nice thickness. Okay. And you want to let this dry um, before wrapping it technically. Um, so there you go. Okay. So then you have a, I mean, obviously this is not a pretty coaster, but now you have four of these ready to go, right? And let's, you know, I'll get three other ugly ones and we'll pretend we're wrapping, wrapping it up, okay? So let's pretend that these are all finished and this is my coaster set, okay? So first things first, I am taking my paper, okay, putting it face down. Again, this is quite a big paper, but whatever. And we just wrap it like a present. I probably would cut this paper down. But okay. So now we are covered like this, right? And then we take a sheet of our bubble wrap. Is this a tearing one? Some of them are tearing ones. Nope. Um, let's pretend we have scissors. Yikes. All right. Oh, they are tearing, right? And then I really like to wrap them very carefully because, you know, now, hold on, we're just doing some Tetris. Over, under, because I don't have the tape yet. Yeah, over, under. There we go, look at me. Genius. Oh, that's this part. There you go, genius. Okay, and first coaster, ready to go in. Perfectly cute. Let us, should I pretend to pack the rest for you? Um, is that kind of silly? Mm. So, I guess it's kind of silly to pretend. You get the picture, right? Then, we do the same. Close up your box. Now, if you have fancy tape, obviously this is a bit um, much, but why don't we do it for fun anyways? Although I don't really want to lick this. I usually have a cup of water. But we'll just do it for fun anyways. Okay. I was trying to remember that website that literally it's like the most famous one where you can get anything printed. Um, here, I'll put some of this. I'll just wet it up a bit, just for some, you know, pretend it's neat. 
And there you go. Box ready to go. Okay? So, it just didn't stick because I, I didn't use water, but you get the picture. So, I think, I hope that answers all your questions. Um, I'm going to do a close up of the actual finished product of both the swipes and the blowouts. And stay tuned because I have coming one, two, three, four, five, at least six, probably a few more um, color combo ideas, which are super fun. And I hope you like my treadmill. It's actually called like a waiting space of art. Um, I hope that helped. Let me know what you think. I hope that you aren't uh, scared to resin anymore or pack up. I know it can be quite overwhelming. Um, so I love you guys. Bye bye. a custom set of coasters and what they asked me to do was to connect with my intuition and uh, connect with their energy and channel their colors now for a lot of you who may not know this was my before i was lisa marvin art uh, i owned i still own a spiritual wellness center um, for over 15 years i'm a spiritual medium and therapist and hypnotherapist and all those other things so i don't talk about that much in this space because it's a different space but um even before i did this i was doing spiritual art where i was channeling messages for people and i actually did it with um chalk it's called inter art with pastels anyways um so she knew this about me and she asked me to kind of connect with her energy and to do it